I'm Atubo George, and I welcome you to this new week. Now, we're in the month of October. And listen, God has said this month great blessings are coming to you. Praise God. So I'm so excited today. And this week is going to be a great week. God is opening doors for you. So get ready. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. For this at this time of getting deep into your truth, that we may learn words that will be useful to us. We open our heart, Lord, for your spirit to inspire us and be taught of you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said you will guide us into all truth, and we expect less, we expect nothing less from this. We will be guided into all truth as we follow you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. Now, we, we've been talking about lessons, life lessons from the Bible. And last week, we had a great time last week. And we are going to go into other stories this week, you know, last week we talked about Job, we talked about different things. Like I told you, I said, listen, the, the purpose of this teaching is to get you grounded in understanding, and this is going to help your character. David said something to Solomon in the book of Proverbs, says, in all your getting, get understanding. See, it says, in everything you're getting, Get understanding. Praise God. Now I want us to look at something in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 12. So turn your Bibles there with me now. Luke chapter 12. I want to read a story here that Jesus shared with the crowd when he was teaching them. From verse 16, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. Now, what's this, what's, what happened to this man? He had a bumper harvest. Take note of that. He had a bumper harvest. And when the bumper harvest came, he said, wow, so what do I do now? My bands cannot take this. All right, so verse 18. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul. Now I want you to, well, let's just finish the story then. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thy ease. Eat, drink, and be Mary, praise God. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Wonderful. Did you see that? Now, let's bring this home. God called this man a fool. So what did he do wrong? Let's bring it home. You have an account, maybe, maybe you opened a student account, or maybe you opened a, a, an account that has a limit of transaction you can do with that account. And then suddenly, you were given a contract. And that contract requires a certain kind of account because of the kind of money that will be lodged in it. So you think, okay, you know what, let me go upgrade my account. 
so that I can accommodate this big check that is coming in. And then you go to the bank, you say, I want to upgrade my account, and then they tell you what to do, and then you, you go ahead and you get it done. Praise God. Now, what's wrong with that? Think about it. Nothing, right? But you see, what happened here is this. This man, you see, the, 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 the secret of this story is in verse 19. Everything he said from, from verse 17 to 18 is not a problem. But it is what he said in verse 19 that was the problem. And what did he say in verse 19? He said, I will say to my soul, So thou hast much good laid up for many years. Think about it. Hey, he said, So you have much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, and be merry. Now, what is wrong with this statement? He built a bigger barn. And then he says, look, so, man, we've got enough money to last us for many years. He didn't steal. I want you to understand something. See, I need to bring out this point now so we really get the story right. He didn't steal these this fruits. He didn't send, he was not a... a bandit you know he he didn't send people to go waylay people from on the way from their farms he no it was his harvest he planted he reaped his harvest now after reaping his harvest he said man the bumper harvest maybe the rain was good everything just went well and who gives the harvest god right uh -huh. who gives the harvest god so god gave him a big harvest so he built a bigger barn and then he said from what we have in store right now, this is going to last us for many years. So even if I don't work for maybe 10 years, I'll still not finish this harvest. So more like, even if I don't work again from now, I'm still not going to. What I have in store in my account is going to take care of me for this number of years. So he said to his soul, so, Relax. Take your ease. Why? Thou hast many goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Question is, is he saying, see, is he saying, uh, now I'm talking about what, what Jesus meant now. Is Jesus saying that what was wrong is because the man says he should drink. Maybe, maybe it's alcohol he wants to drink. Or to be merry. Is Jesus against being merry? Come on now. I'll tell you. First of all, you need to understand where this story is coming from. Where is the story coming from? The story is coming from verse 15. Let me start from verse 13. And one of, one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said, as Jesus now, he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Somebody came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you know you're the perfect judge. Please come and help me sort out with my brother so we'll divide the inheritance right. Now, what's wrong with that? And Jesus said, hey, 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 who has made me a divider of inheritance or a judge to you? And then he now turned to the people. And he said, take heed and beware of covetousness. So this statement is coming from what just happened right now. It says, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of things which he possesses. 
So Jesus said, beware of covetousness. Now, what is covetousness? We need to understand this. You know, we, we grow assuming, you know, we're taught covetousness when you seek another person's own. I, I found out in studying scriptures, in fact, even from this story, that that's not covetousness. See, because why would Jesus say, beware of covetousness? Because someone says, tell my brother to give me my own portion of the inheritance. So that should all give you an understanding. So what is covetousness? Covetousness is simply the thinking in your heart that with what you have now, you will be fine. Covetousness also means the thinking in your heart that because you don't have anything in your hand, you are doomed. It's still covetousness. So covetousness is not just the one who's thinking of grabbing. Covetousness is also the one who's sitting down there thinking, I, I wish if I had money now, if I had a good job now, I know what I would have done. You are covetous. Now, because it is that thought that will lead you into stealing. It is that thought that will lead you into cheating other people. Because you think, I don't have or you think, if I can have this much. I think it was on Friday I was telling you about, you know, the man who's, who's there thinking, Lord, if, I, if, if you can just give me 10 million naira, if you can just give me 50 million naira, I will just resign from my job. I will not work again, <laughs> praise God. And I said, when, when you are doing that, when you are talking like that, you are actually confessing that you are under bondage to mammon. Praise God. You are confessing that you are under bondage to mammon. Oh God, you know what? Sometimes you're talking to someone and say, Man, there's a contract I'm pursuing. When that contract comes, ah, I will resign. In fact, I will retire at the age of 30. I will just I will retire from, from, from chasing money. You know what you're saying? You're, you're saying, I'm under bondage to mammon, and the price to deliver me from mammon is this amount of money. That's what you're confessing. So you're thinking, when I get that money, I'm going to pay mammon. Say, mammon, I have come with my deliverance fee. So today I free myself from you. Praise God. Now that's what you're saying. Now, he, he said, you see, his problem was the thinking in his heart that because he's gotten all this harvest, he doesn't need to walk again. And God looked at him and says, you are a fool. Why would God call him a fool? You know, David said to so David, David actually said this in, in the book of Psalms. He says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, you don't find this man saying or telling anybody. Jesus never said this man said there is no God. But God called him, you fool. Why would God call him a fool? Because truly, from his action, he just showed that he doesn't believe that there is God. What do I mean by that? Yes. Now, he looked at what he had gotten. So much harvest. He didn't even go to the Lord and say, Lord, this harvest is great. What's on your mind concerning this? I, are you getting the picture now? What's on your mind concerning this? Well, I, I never expected this harvest. It's bigger than I can handle. So, so Lord, what's on your mind concerning this? If he had done that, and the Lord had commanded him build bigger bands. Now, you see where the, you see where the, the, the reasoning is going. God wouldn't have called him a fool. But you see, he took this action by himself and then he concluded in his heart, I've got so much to live on for many years. So I am resigning from work. Praise <laughs> God. And, and, and you know, sometimes people are that way. God is calling you into ministry. God is calling you into doing something else for him. And then you're saying, Lord, if I, I, I want to be able to save up to 10 million naira. So for me to save up to 10 million naira from my salary where I'm working, it will take me about three years. Say, Lord, please, 
let me just save up that amount. I'm going to be strict in my savings. If I save that amount, then I'll be able to resign. You are covetous. Because you are thinking that you need to have that security of mammon before you will obey God. You are supposed to go before the Lord. Now, this also doesn't mean the Lord says, resign. You just say, okay, I'm resigning. You see, sometimes it's important that you ask the Lord, how? I'll share a story with you tomorrow in this regards. Praise God. God bless you. Our time is up. Listen, go enjoy God's richness today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye. <laughs>